Act Two, Have an Eye for. The next day, I try to clear my head as I'm walking to school, but I can't stop thinking about that girl. Should I leave class during the break to go look for her? It's going to be difficult to leave without a good excuse, though. Maybe when school's over, I'll go to where I met her yesterday and say I just happened by. But there's no guarantee she's going to be in the same place today. Besides, I didn't exactly handle that situation gracefully, leaving her like I was trying to run away. Definitely not the best first impression to make. I'll have to think of some excuse for going. Why did I even go to investigate her crying in the first place? I'm not even sure I know myself. That girl. I don't even know her name. What should I call her? Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I even think of what to call her, I have to actually find her first. I'll ask her name, introduce myself, and that'll probably be good enough. She'll probably think I'm some kind of freak, but I guess that's fine. Maybe if I just talk to her, it'll lighten some of the tension between us. I look up to find I've arrived at school. Looks like I was on autopilot again. I get inside, change my shoes, and head up to the second floor where my classroom is. As I walk up the stairs, I see something strange moving out of the corner of my eye. Hmm? Oh, it's her. Peeking around the corner of the connecting hallway is a head of brown hair. It's the girl I've been seeing in my mind all morning. She's actually strangely cute. Weird, but cute. I seem to be the only one who noticed her head popping around the corner. She must think that pose will keep her totally hidden, as if she's in a manga or something, but she really stands out, at least to me. She's moving her eye around frantically, and sure enough, she picks me out from within the sparse cr crowd. And she's got some cuts and stuff. I'm so surprised to see her, all I can think is, why is a first year student on the second year floor, before she hurries up to me? She hands me a familiar handkerchief. That's right, I had totally forgotten that I lent it to her yesterday. I take the handkerchief, which she's folded neatly into perfect square. I think she even washed it. Uh, yesterday, I mean, thank you. As soon as she says this in her tiny voice, she runs down the stairs and vanishes around the corner. Hold on, wait! I can't stop myself from calling out, but the morning bell rings, drowning out my voice for me. Oh well, I head to my own classroom. The lunch bell rings. I stash my book in my desk and bolt out of the classroom. I didn't even get to thank that girl for washing my handkerchief. I go to look for her to say that I what I wanted to. Well, damn it. I go to look for her to say what I wanted to earlier. I have a good excuse to talk to her now. I can't let this chance slip away. I arrive at the end of the hallway, but instead of going down to the first year classrooms, I head up the stairs. I don't know for sure, but I think there's a good chance she's going to be up where I met her yesterday. Well, even if she's not, I can just look elsewhere. I get to the third floor and keep going up, all the way to the stairs that lead to the roof. Hey! Huh? Just like yesterday, she's sitting on the same step at the top of the stairs. I see her shoulders jolt when she hears my voice, and she looks up at me. Her mouth is opening and closing rapidly. She clearly wants to say something, but can't find the words. She's in the same position I was in yesterday, it seems. Hey, uh, thanks for washing my handkerchief. I didn't get chance to. Ugh. Thanks for washing my handkerchief. I didn't get a chance to say it earlier. Yeah. There's a lot of confusion in her soft voice. The fact that she's looking everywhere but at my face tells me she's not sure what to do. I'm obviously making her uncomfortable, but I'm not going to run away like I did yesterday. So, uh, is this where you eat your lunch, huh? Do you mind if I join you? I say this as gently as possible as I notice the lunchbox she's got perched on her knees. That's a good place to put it, I guess. Yeah, if you're going somewhere during lunchtime, you're probably bringing your lunch as well. While we're talking, I take out my own lunch. Now that I think about it, I don't know if she has any other friends to eat lunch with. Huh? Oh, oh no, no, no. 
Her answer comes too quickly, and I wonder if she really means it. Her eye starts darting wildly around the corner in her effort to avoid making eye contact, and she begins to look even more nervous. Thanks, I'll, I'll just sit down here on these steps. She didn't tell me to go away, at least. I take a seat next to her and unpack my lunch. This seems to startle her and she leans away from me as if she's trying to escape. I sat next to her but it's not like I'm that close to her. I'm a little offended. While I'm unpacking my lunch, I look her over as casually as I can manage. Up until now, I was fixated on her eye but the rest of her appearance is pretty striking as well. Her head is covered in bandages, her hair is messy and unkempt, her uniform looks like it's been ripped apart and only partially stitched back together. I catch glimpses of the skin on her shoulders and stomach and it looks far from normal. Man, she's been through a lot of stuff, something's going on here. You see all of that? Hmm. I notice that she has bruises or maybe birthmarks, I'm not sure which, all over her legs, her neck and anywhere else I can see. The skin on her dainty limbs look white as a ghost. She doesn't look healthy by any standard. Is that? Suddenly our eyes meet. I guess I was staring too obviously. We quickly break eye contact, but she keeps shooting me sidelong glances like she's worried I'll attack her or something. I'm clutching my chopsticks, but my lunch remains untouched. The long silence is getting uncomfortable. I try to strike up some conversation. Hey, uh, come to think of it, I haven't even introduced myself. I'm Fukunaga Mamoru. What's your name? Eh, it's Usui Sachi. Sachi, huh? Nice to finally meet you. N nice to meet you. Hmm. Hey. It looks like she's not too talkative, though I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I have to keep the conversation going somehow. You know, I'm gonna be really pissed if somebody has been really has been beating her up and picking on her. Do you always eat lunch up here? Does anyone else ever come up with you or anything? E yes, I always eat here. No one else comes with me. Maybe that was too forward, but the fact that no one else comes up with her isn't too surprising. She's probably always alone. She shifts her attention onto me, watching me cautiously. Is she that afraid of me touching her? I see. So what do you do during lunch break then? Read, finish homework, a few other things. Oh really? What kind of book are you reading? I haven't really read any novels lately. Oh, s sorry. Sachi cries out abruptly, her voice rising like she's about to lose her mind. My lunch! I, I mean, I'm done, so, uh, excuse me! Oh, okay, bye-bye! No sooner does she say this than she scoops up her almost untouched lunchbox and run down, runs down the stairs. I can't really chase after her with my lunchbox sitting open on my legs, so she leaves me behind. I've just been run out on, and silence falls over the stairwell. I guess trying to force conversation like that backfired. Sashi only ever replied to my questions with a few words at a time, but she kept looking over at me with her worried eye. Did I really make her that uneasy? Is it that hard for her to open up to me? This girl seems to lead a very troubled life, and I might not ever be able to get close to her. No, just because I had one unsuccessful experiment doesn't mean I should give up. Before I thought that I'd be... Ugh, hold on. Before, I thought that I'd be satisfied if I just spoke to her once, but now I have an overwhelming desire to get to know her. I have to become friends with her now, no matter what. I can't give up. I have to keep trying. Yeah, well, being enthusiastic. But yeah, well, being enthusiastic about it is one thing, but there's nothing I can do right now. I might as well eat my food. While I think of a way to meet her again, I finish off what's left of my lunch. Hmm. But it's so quiet here now. I thought that no matter where in the school you were during lunchtime, you would be able to hear students' lively voices, but they barely reach this lonely place. It's like I'm in another world. The voices of the students talking down below are so quiet that the sound of my chopsticks clicking against my lunchbox is like a hammer on stone. Even the sound of my shirt rustling as I move is like the howling of the wind in comparison. How can she eat like this every day? 
As I close my emptied lunchbox, I make up my mind. I absolutely have to become friends with her. Returning to my classroom, I catch Tomo and Akemi just as they're finishing their lunchboxes. Hey! Where'd you go? The two of us ate our lunchbox together all alone, alright? Come to think of it, I never said anything to them as I left. Oh, um, my bad. I finished my lunch too. Where'd you run off to? Hey, have you guys seen a first year girl with, um, a really unusual appearance? What do you mean by that? A first year girl, the one with the ocular issue? Yeah, that sounds like her. Huh? What? 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 What are you talking about? Something I don't know about? Oh, this probably isn't something you'd want to hear. It's not really a happy story. Oh, how rude! You shouldn't keep these things from your friends! That's not what I meant, but... Anyway, why do you want to know about her? No reason, I just heard about her and got curious as all. Well. Do you know her? Personally, no. I've seen her around, but I've never talked to her. As for what I've heard about her, I'm not sure if it's true or not. It might all just be baseless rumors. That's fine, just tell me what you know. Are you sure you really want to know? Tomo looks side to side like he wants to make sure no one else is listening, even though the three of us are alone in here. Yeah. Alright. He promptly turns away from me and stares at the floor. He looks as though he's staring into another dimension. Fine, but take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. A first year student in class 2, female, name Usui something. I only remember her family name, but she only has one eye. Wait, one eye? You mean she's lost one in an accident? She didn't lose one, she only ever had one, right in the center of her face. One big eye. What? You mean she was born that way? Oh my god! I don't really know the details, but it seems that she was. I've only ever seen her from afar, but I really don't think that's an injury. Oh my god, there's a really a person like that in one of our first year classes? I have never seen her or even heard about her, not even once. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, we are in a different year from her, but regardless, I would guess she's trying hard to stay hidden both from the other students and from herself. What do you mean she's trying to stay hidden from herself? I told you it wasn't a happy story. Tomo takes a quick glance at Akemi. He seems worried to have said so much about Sashi around her, though it's not like I forced him to tell me. Yesterday he avoided the subject of the school celebrities. Was that because he didn't want to talk about Sashi? That's all I've heard, but she does have a startling appearance. She's definitely not normal. Maybe she's creepy, maybe not. But you have to admit that at the very least, she's unusual. She's fascinating to some and scary to others. I'm sure there are plenty more who find her disturbing. Well... From what I hear, she's always covered in wounds. It's hard to believe they're all accidental, considering how many she has. So, in that case, they could be from... someone beating her up? If someone at her home is hurting her, I couldn't tell you. But there is a real possibility that she's being bullied at school. Oh god damn it, if they are, I'm gonna kick their asses. Could that be it? Before, I wasn't sure what caused all her injuries, but thinking back, what Tomo's saying makes sense. Doesn't anyone try to protect her? I told you, all I know is rumors, not details, but, but... 
there's another student who's also a little famous, and I think she's the one responsible for bullying the girl. It's not real, Chan, is it? Oh my gosh. This catches me off guard. Akemi, normally so loud, speaks in a hushed tone. Now that I think about it, she's being abnormally quiet the whole time. Tomo's been telling us about Sai. Oh, hold on. Now that I think about it, she's been abnormally quiet the whole time Tomo's been telling us about Sashi. I always figured Akemi would be the first to denounce the bullying whenever she sees it, but... Do you know her? I wouldn't say we know her per se. We just ran into her several times during middle school. Doesn't that mean they know her? Akemi seems to be staring into space now, thinking. Anyway, whether or not we know her doesn't really matter. But yes, the alleged assailant is this girl, Sarukawa Rui. I've heard that she's from a well-off household and was pampered growing up. As a result, she's very self-centered. That's the impression I got when I first met her, but there's probably more to it than that. She's really popular among other students as well. That also contributes to her behavior, or at least, I think so. I see. Thanks for telling me. I can't I can find out the truth of this on my own later on, but I think I'm starting to understand more of the situation now. So, what do you think of this one-eyed girl? As Tomo said, the fact is that Sashi is very unusual. I'm curious to know what he thinks about her. Depending on his response, I may have to change my plans. I just told you what I think, so tell me, what were you doing during lunch? Why are you so concerned about this? I didn't plan on hiding it, but I guess I could have anyway. Tomo seems to understand what I was getting at. I can't fool you. You made it too obvious. As I said before, I only, I only have trivial information. You shouldn't judge a book by her cover, so to speak. I haven't concerned myself with her until now because I didn't have any reason to. That said, if you want to help her out, you've got my support. I see. Well, thanks. I didn't think there'd be any problems, but still, I'm glad Tomo's so eager to help. I keep my face expressionless, but I breathe at an internal sigh of relief. Wait, wait! Did you actually meet this girl, Makun? Akemi quickly returns to her previous loud demeanor. Yeah, I did. Oh my god, no fair! I want to make friends with this girl too, Makun! Come on, you gotta introduce me! Oh my god, for reals! Yep. Akemi's back to her old self. The way she was acting before was so unlike her. She seemed worried when Sarukawa and her bullying came up, but now it's like she wasn't even here for that part of the conversation. At least I don't have to worry about Akemi being nice to Sashi if they ever did meet. She's so damn friendly. I'm not sure how I would do that. I mean, I'm not even really friends with her, you know? Oh, come on, what are you saying? Come on! I mean, it's just she's not used to talking with people, and I think talking to someone like you would be really overwhelming for her. What? What's that supposed to mean? You don't want me to be friends with her? That's definitely not fair. Oh my god, you're an asshole. It's because your voice is capable of leveling buildings. Hey, hey, come on, it's not like I'm going to be giving a speech to a huge audience, it's no, uh, it's no ex exaggeration to say I'm a professional at having super relaxed conversations with guys, girls, kids, and even dogs, cats, and lizards. It's definitely an exaggeration. You are intimidating with that loud voice of yours, and that meeting is going to end with that girl running away in tears. That's right. I know these two are good people, and as much as I want to introduce them to Sashi, I don't think suddenly coming by with two more people is a good idea when she barely even knows me. Oh my god, boo, what about Tomo then? 
I don't think that would work either. Don't you think she'd be just a little scared if two guys she doesn't really know walked up to her and just started talking to her? She pouts at Tomo. He's right. I don't exactly have the friendliest face. It's safest if you just meet with her on your own for a little while. It's true. He's really tall and he always has some of a strange look in his eyes. I probably scare her enough all on my own. But if I brought Tomo along, he she'd probably scream and run away. Sorry, you two. Fine, okay, whatever. I get it. I'll give you a little while. But someday, oh my gosh, you have to introduce me. Sure, I promise. Good luck. If you need help, just ask us. Thanks. If it comes to that, I'll gladly take your offer.